Hi, and welcome to the brief overview of the interactive word walls. Um, today we're going to hit the highlights of what Dr. Julie Jackson presented on her um, presentation day for our district PD on October 11th, as well as the Saturday session that she presented on uh, October 15th. So if you were able to attend, this will be a great overview and have all of the resources in one place. And if you weren't able to attend, you'll still be able to get a great um, starting point and jump right into interactive word walls for science. Um, you're looking at the cover of an article that was in Science and Children. Um, it was written by Dr. Jackson and Rose uh, Navarez um, in 2013. And um, I have a copy of this article um, attached in Canvas where you um, we're able to access this video for you to read and it provides a really nice step-by-step -step overview as you can see in the subtitle it really um, has five easy steps to get you started and then we've got some other resources to kind of help you when you're ready to go further or need further um, clarification so we're going to start off with the very basics of interactive word walls and what i've done is i've created a modified frayer model to help organize all of the big essential components so in the middle of my frayer model i have the term that we're talking about which is interactive word walls and these are two of the resources that i have linked for you back in canvas um, and these are both Dr. Julie Jackson um, open source resources. One is her website called thesciencetoolkit.com. And then you can see a plethora of all kinds of um, interactive word walls for any grade level in pretty much any subject on her Facebook page. And I'll take a few minutes a little bit later in the presentation to show you what those are. So I just wanted to give you an idea, but those are linked um, back in Canvas. So let's start off with just a real um, basic definition of what an interactive word wall is, maybe opposed to just regular word wall. So here we have the definition for an interactive word wall. And one of the key components that distinguishes this from just a regular word wall is that the terms are displayed in some sort of organized manner, um, usually showing the relationship between the terms. So if you think about a graphic organizer, that's the structure for how you put the word walls up. So it's not necessarily alphabetical, but to show the relationship between the words. It's also um, distinguished by um, the fact that the teacher designs it as a learning tool but the students help make it, um, actually physically make the um, definitions that go up, um, some of the images that go up, and, the, and um, they use it. Some of the characteristics of an interactive word wall, um, it's going to be focused on academic vocabulary of current study. So um, these are not going to be words that stay up all year long, unless that's something that needs to stay up all year long because it's currently being used. So. Um, interactive word walls should be current with um, modes of study um, for that particular unit or um, standard. Um, an interactive word wall will often contain not only terms, but realia, which are just real objects, or images when you can't use the real thing, um, and student-generated definitions. A good word wall should be visible from across the room, so no matter where you're sitting as a student, you're able to access that and be able to use it. As I mentioned in the definition, the vocabulary is arranged in um, some sort of intentional way, um, in a graphic organizer or to show relationships, so they're not just put up there without a plan. It is teacher designed, so the real work of the teacher comes in the planning part, but then the creation of the wall um, really is being handed over and led um, by the students. And then interactive means um, not only that the students help create it, but they also use it within their work. And there I just have a quick note about what realia, that as a term that's really used in this um, area when we talk about interactive board walls that you might not be familiar with. Okay, so next in our fair model, we're going to take a look at some examples. So I have just a few examples, and then I'll show you where you can find lots more examples to look at. So here are three examples, and I'll put these up and then talk through them just a little bit about why I chose them as examples for an interactive word wall. So if we go back to our definition, you can see that there are terms there, and there is some sort of organization. So the one that's um, black is a T-chart. 
and then we have a um, soils, the formations of soil. So that's a modified tree chart where you have different categories and subcategories coming off. And then you have a five column um, graphic organizer for the Kindergarten Rock Museum. You'll see terms, you see real objects, you see student illustrations, you see student definitions, and you also see some parts of it that are empty. So it's something that's being used ongoing and is added to as you move through your unit of study. I have one non-example, um, and, and really the thing I like about Dr. Jackson is she really says just jump in and um, we have good, better, and best word walls to start somewhere, but this was, I thought, a good example of one that um, I think if we're here, we can really move forward. The vocabulary is really not organized in any particular way except the general topic. So if you can see the image clearly, you have some terms that have green border, some that have black border, some of them have red border, and so forth, but they're not really related um, within that grouping even. Um, because there are many, many different topics of science on this word wall, they're not really current, and there's no student work that's represented. So this would be, I think, a step down from a good. So if we were here, we would just want to start to go back to that definition and, and take a look at how we could beef it up a little bit. So this is kind of a one-pager overview of interactive word walls, and what I'd like to do next is just take you through two resources. Um, that can help you in addition to the article that you'll find back in Canvas from Dr. Jackson. Um, her website and the Facebook page I think will serve as being really good resources. So first of all I'm going to take you to her website. So I'm going to reduce this down and I'm going to pull her website over. And her website is called the sciencetoolkit.com and as I mentioned this is all open source so everything on here is free for you to use. Um, on her home page, you'll see that there are some free downloadables. Um, this is where you can contact her for workshops, and she has a great little blog um, with just a couple of posts, but it's really a thorough post. Um, what I want to do is go to the free downloadables part and show you what's available here. There's also a sample gallery down here with a few of the word wall images, um, but you'll find many more on her Facebook page. So we go to the free downloadables. You'll see here are some free resources. And so she has started off um, helping teachers get started on this journey by providing some structure for that graphic organizer that I talked about with two topics in science, physical properties and energy. And she has these for first grade um, all the way up through fifth grade for elementary. Um, as well as a student organizer that mirrors that word wall. So those word wall examples that we looked at um, in the previous slide, the students would have a mini representation of that to fill in so that they would have that in their journal. So you can explore some of those, even though we've passed these two units. Um, you can still see um, how she has those organized and see starting steps that would be very easy for you to replicate for whatever unit you're in. The other thing I really wanted to point out to you are these free downloads here. Um, we have lots of good, um, I think, introductory documents here. So interactive word expectations. I got some of those um, characteristics from that. Five steps for creating interactive word walls. You'll find that here as well as in the article that I have linked in Canvas. Um, this is a test taking strategy that's not necessarily designed to go with the walls, but that's in there. Um, if you're um, looking for cognates that are specific to science, those are here too. Um, the vocabulary planning document, so to help you determine what words go on there, where it fits within the 5E, and then a couple of other resources as well. I think out of all of these though, I think the two places that you would want to explore first would be the interactive word wall expectations, the five steps for creating, and then the planning document. So of course you're welcome to look at all of those, but I think those are good first steps there. You'll see she also at the top has a teacher pay teacher page, but most of her resources are free on there as well. So this is just an overview of her website. Um, I don't want to take up too much time because you can explore that on your own. 
So next I want to pull this back over and then take a look at her Facebook page. Um, so this is her Facebook page. It's called the Science Toolkit. You can search for that. Um, it's at the Science Toolkit. And you can take a look at her feed. Um, teachers send in pictures of their word walls all of the time. So it's really neat to see kind of a live living organism resource here of things that people are doing all around the state. Um, Dr. Jackson is from Texas State University, so many of her teachers are from Texas. Um, but if you're specifically looking for your grade level and maybe even in your content area, if it's science or you want to try something else, let me show you how to get there a really efficient way. Um, you'll go to photos. And then when you get to the photos page, you're going to see a button that says see all. What she's done is she's created some albums. So if we go to see all, we can see all of the albums that she makes and she keeps this pretty current. So if you just want to look at all of her timeline photos, there's that, but here's math word walls, language arts word walls, and then when we get down to the grade levels, here's third grade. These are all going to be science third grade, I think, for the most part. Uh, fourth grade science, fifth grade science, first grade, second grade, kindergarten, and then there's some different albums down here as well. So there's lots and lots for you to see uh, within here, which really gives you a lot of good ideas. Uh, Dr. Jackson will tell you they're not all perfect examples, they're not all wonderful, but they are real things that teachers are doing out there in the real world. And so if you decide to jump in, you can send one to her as well. She'd love it. Okay, so just a quick overview of that. So let me go ahead and go back um, to our fair model. So this is where we left off from our overall information about interactive word walls. And the next thing I'd like to do before we wrap up is just talk about a couple of frequently asked questions that I've had with teachers since October 11th. Um, many teachers have gotten in touch with me and said, hey, this is, this is what I've tried so far. And then I've also had some questions. So I just want to go a couple over a couple of those. So someone had asked me, how do I know exactly what words to put up? Um, well, we want to focus on the academic vocabulary, which you know you can find on the standard clarifier. So if you're going to try it, I would maybe try um, a standard that you feel like would work best for an interactive word wall organization first and give that one a shot. Um, I think typically no more than maybe 10 to 15 words. I think that's a lot of words. Um, so you won't find many more than that on the standard clarifier. Not 10 minimum, but no more than 10 to 15. Uh, where can I see some examples from my grade level? Um, I would suggest that you go on to her Facebook page, like I showed you, because there she's got them organized in those albums by grade level, um, as well as different content areas if you want to give it a shot in a different content area besides science. Um, so my students and I built one now what? How do we interact with that? Um, next six weeks, I will have a just-in-time video that goes much, much more deeply into this. Um, but basically, you can have your students um, just start creating definitions and then testing different examples based on what they have on their definition up there. Um, you would have them write, um, how can you take that graphic organizer and create sentences to create a summary of what is up there? Um, when they're answering a question, refer to the interactive board wall and say, can you find an example up here of what you're talking about, or can you use some of those terms on there? So there's lots of games and things like that that you can do and strategies, and like I said, I will um, be creating a, um, a much more in-depth just in time for that. But if you'll just get started with it, I think you'll kind of organically see different ways to start utilizing it. Uh, next question is, how long do I keep the word wall up? And the word wall should be up as long as it's in current study. So if you're doing um, a standard and it's a 12 day um, on the pacing guide, then it would be appropriate to keep it up for as long as you were studying that. If you want to have that up for later review, say for instance you're in fifth grade and you want to have that available for your star review, you might want to think about taking a photograph of it and then being able to project it. Um, also, um, Dr. Jackson talks about students creating their own mini word wall just by representing the graphic organizer and the terms um, in their science journal. So that's a way that, that you can keep that and refer back to it after you've taken down the wall. 
Another question I had was where does this fit in the 5e? So if you're following the 5e um, lesson model, um, as we do here in Birdville, um, building the wall would really hit in the explain. That's where the explicit vocabulary instruction is. And then using the um, word wall, um, you would use that and explain, elaborate, and then depending on what kind of evaluation you were doing, you could use it in there as well. Okay, so I just want to end with just um, a little snippet from Dr. Jackson's article. This was something that really spoke to me when I first heard about her work, um, that interactive word walls can be good, better, and best. And, and you can see the good. Um, it just has three criteria, basically, and I think that that's a great place to start. Um, and then you can move on um, up the line as you get more comfortable and your students um, see the benefit, and you see the benefit of using these. So thank you for joining me for the overview, and please head back to Canvas and take a look at the article, which Dr. Jackson will take you step by step through. Um, it's only a few pages long, and it's a very easy read, very digestible, and it's designed for teachers to get started. Email me any um, images that you have of great word walls and let me know how it goes. Um, if you've got a question or if you've got something to discuss, I also have a discussion link back in Canvas and I'd love to hear your questions or your ideas um, or even post some pictures in there. Good luck and thanks very much.